Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to another video. You can see on my table I'm just in the middle of the building process of this water-cooled PC I'm building for the Corsair Germany YouTube channel because it's a giveaway and maybe you can just also go over to the Corsair German YouTube channel. You probably won't understand it but maybe can still participate in the giveaway. Anyway, I had a very, very interesting discussion with a friend a few days ago. He's working at the university and he's in touch with CO2 lasers, working on CO2 laser research right now. And he told me that the cooling they have on their CO2 laser is quite interesting because typically if it's like a low power or mid-range power CO2 laser, they're like air cooled, but the high power CO2 lasers are typically water cooled. And then he told me they are using tap water. They're just running the cold tap water through the CO2 laser and then into the drain and my first thought was like that's an interesting approach mainly because you don't need like radiators you don't need pumps but at the same time it felt like you're wasting water and I had a very long and interesting discussion with him about this topic and in the process of this video we are going to ev evaluate those points and right now if you're probably thinking that is a very bad idea. You're going to waste so much like energy and water, then you feel free to just leave a comment down straight below what you're thinking initially when you hear this topic. And the reason why I started to, or why I decided to do this topic right now is because I'm just in the middle of building this PC and then I can just uh, use this for testing. We're going to run some cold tap water through CPU block and through the GPU, see what the cooling would look like depending what kind of flow rate, what kind of temperature we can get out of the tap, and then see what the conclusion will be in the end. Component-wise, we have a 360 radiator on top, 120 in the front with a pump. Those three components won't be needed for our test. We also have a Ryzen 5 3600 right here. We have a Radeon 5700 non-XT, therefore it should be pretty balanced out. I'm not going to say budget gaming system because with custom water cooling it's definitely not budget but should be a quite even balance between CPU and GPU. That's what we're going to use today and going to run water through the CPU block and through the GPU. If you would have asked me like a year ago, no, I would have never said or agreed that I would film in my bathroom but here we are. Also gives me the chance to try out my new camera or other camera I have to film on the road. It's a Sony ZV-1, I cannot remember the name, but it's like a small camera I can hold in my hand for filming. Let's see if this works out. Yeah, and uh, that's my plan. I want to connect the tubing to the shower. Well, I also have a separate shower, therefore I don't need the bath tube and that's why I want to attach it to here. I also bought a 10 of EK ZMT tubing, that's a 16 to 10 millimeter tubing. I think in total I have like 30 meter. That should be plenty to put it through my apartment and also bought some adapters. I hope I can use them to somehow make a connection to connect the shower head to, yeah, the normal tubes. First step is to remove this part. Adapterception is looking good. Perfect. Now before we use all the rest of the tubing to connect uh, the water to our system, there is still the question, how cold is the water out of this tap? Is it maybe even too cold? Because if it's too cold, then we could risk condensation in the system. Like right now it's summer, we have like, I don't know, 26, 27 degrees Celsius easily inside. And therefore, if it's like 12 degrees, maybe it's too cold. And also the flow rate will be interesting. To determine the flow rate, I'm just going to use this, I'm going to fill it by a liter stop the time and then we can easily calculate the flow rate. I just repeated it a few more times and the conclusion is that it takes about six seconds at the maximum flow rate to get one liter and if we calculate it into liter per hour that is about 600 liters per hour and that is quite a lot. That is much more than what we need. I think we should be fine with like 30 to 70 maybe 80 liters per hour. That should be sufficient if the water temperature is cold. How cold is the water? I think that's pretty much a perfect temperature. 18 degrees Celsius just a little bit below the average room temperature. If it's too warm in summer, it could be an issue, but otherwise, 18 degrees, pretty much perfect. Before we start assembling the loop, we obviously have to get the water from my bathroom to 
the PC that will require some tubing for sure. First facts which I found online, all those facts are based for Germany. Obviously it's completely different if you're living in a different part of the world, but I'm just doing my research based on Germany because I can get very good information about this topic right here. Speaking about Germany, we have a water consumption of only 121 liter per day per person, which is globally seen not that much. And in Germany, the government expects that about 82% of the water which we have available right here in Germany is still unused. Therefore, we should have plenty, which is also interesting because in this summer, there were cases where different cities like smaller towns wouldn't have water anymore for days. And that's kind of interesting. So it's definitely more a regional thing. In some regions, you have plenty of water. And then in some other parts of Germany, you definitely didn't have enough water this summer. Therefore, stating like 82% of the water is unused is kind of interesting. But it's also interesting to see that what we're using on a daily basis, like taking a shower, is only 2.7% of the water consumption in Germany. The rest, majority, is industry and also power delivery, like power plants and stuff. And there we have our tubing going from the tap to the CPU starting off on the right side of the CPU block starting also with the CPU block because the CPU will have a higher temperature than the GPU therefore it's cycling first through the CPU block then going inside the GPU leaving going through this flow rate sensor which is not really a sensor but more like an indicator and you're probably thinking wait there is no flow rate and the reason for that is I hope you can see it there is almost no flow rate. That is the lowest we can use. Calculated the flow rate with method I showed you earlier and the flow rate is almost nothing. It's 8.2 liters per hour equals about 50 hour per day if we assume six hour usage of the PC. And most of the people in the water cooling sector say that you need something between like 60 or 120 liters per hour to get good results. But I'm gonna show you that not even bad. With eight liters per hour, the results are not bad. The AMD Ryzen 3600 is running at the manual OC at 4 GHz across all cores. CPU core voltage is, as you can see, something between 1.35 volt. We had a peak temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, which sounds a bit much, but considering that the flow rate is the lowest we can use, that is not bad at all. And we have 3600 points. Great score regarding the CPU name, not even mad. GPU temperature was also quite low, peaked out at 37 degrees Celsius. Obviously the GPU is not doing anything, but it's still getting the warm water out of the CPU block. Now for this whole project, I asked myself, is this a bad thing for the environment, what we're doing? Because we're definitely using a lot of water. We're not wasting it because the water goes back into the circle. It's not wasted, it's used. And then at least here in Germany, I often heard the argument, use water, use it because we have all the pipes down there and they have to be clean otherwise if you're not using enough water. And then I investigated this argument and this argument is not really true. It's only true for some very specific regional areas but not at least not for the big cities. It used to be a case in like the 70s or 80s when it happened that a lot of people from very regional areas went to like the cities and moved over and then the pipes in those very regional areas were like too big than what they used to be for and therefore they had to flush those pipes but that's not really the case in the cities therefore this argument does not really count if we take a look at the water consumption here in germany it's at about 121 liter per day per person and that is a very low area already looking at spain just as a comparison level here in the eu spain has about the, the double of the amount a little bit more it's like 250 to 260 liter per day and the us has about 300 liters per day therefore at least in germany we're not consuming not using as much water and in general if i took a look at this um, study from the german government they found out that saving cold water does not really affect anything like the potential for our environment is mainly for saving hot water we need a lot of energy heating up the water. If you're taking a shower, taking a bath, whatever, then saving water like hot water definitely helps. But saving cold water only helps a tiny bit to almost nothing, which is good for our case. Now, after about five to 10 minutes of gameplay, CPU easily sitting at just below 50 degrees Celsius and the GPU is somewhere at like 60 to 64 degrees Celsius, which is also pretty much a perfect temperature for a GPU. By the way, the water is exiting the loop at 33 degrees Celsius, which is an increase of 15 degrees Celsius. And that's due to the very low flow rate. Energy-wise, I asked myself, how much does it take 
for us to have fresh water and also to clean the water. At least here in Germany for 1000 liter of water it takes half a kilowatt hour just to get the fresh water and we need another 0.78 kilowatt hour just to clean the water again afterwards in total 1.29 kilowatt hour for consuming 1000 liters of water and cost wise it's about 0.4 cent per liter here in Berlin to consume one single liter. But let's see what happens if we increase the flow rate slightly. Now we increase the flow rate to about 40 to 45 liter per hour. You can also now see the flow indicator spinning, therefore there's definitely more happening than before. Now check those temperatures in 3D load in gaming. The GPU is at about 35 degrees Celsius and the CPU is below 40 degrees Celsius. Cinebench R20 about 20 degrees Celsius colder than before. Not even 65 degrees Celsius. That is absolutely massive considering it's R20 with AVX. You might ask yourself the question, why did you even take a closer look at the energy? And that is mainly because I thought if we are taking the approach that we're saving the components inside the PC, we don't need a radiator, we don't need the fans, we don't need the pump. And therefore we're saving the energy which is used to produce those components. Starting off from just the bare resources, of like copper and the plastics which are involved up to the electronics and everything that is in there and if you take a look at what I found out a 360 radiator just one kilogram of like pure copper takes about five kilowatt hour for production and that's just the pure copper not even taking into account that you still have to manufacture the copper and then you're going to paint it and whatever that would be too complicated that's why I just took the bare raw materials and the same for a 120 millimeter fan talking about 0.3 kilowatt hour pump about 0.5 kilowatt hour and the electronics which are involved like the fan motor and everything is like 10 kilowatt hour in total about 22 kilowatt hour which equals to 17,000 liters of water. So you can decide, am I taking the energy to create my components like the fan, like the radiator or am I just using exactly the same amount of energy and just use it as water. And you assume that you're using your PC for six hours per day. The 17,300 liters of water at 70 liter per hour would equal 41 days of usage. And at 30 liter per hour, it's 96 days of usage, which is also one full bathtub full of water per day. And that is quite interesting. Now, obviously, as I said before, we also have to pay for our water. Here in Berlin, it's 0.4 cent per liter. It could be much cheaper where you live, could also be more expensive. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, if we just sum up the cost of our water cooling loop, two times 360 radiator, six times 120 millimeter fan, pump and reservoir, together 460 euro. If we use 70 liter per hour, that equals almost one year and at 30 liter per hour it's almost two years just the amount of water you're using versus the component cost. Now it's getting more interesting because we're running the maximum flow rate. I don't think you can see it because of the shutter speed of the camera. Now check this Cinebench R20 just about to pass with 4.3 across all of the course almost 3900 points in R20 and we had a peak of not even 70 degrees Celsius, considering that I was running co-voltage of, yeah, about 1.45 volt, which is definitely a lot, but it's fine for just running Cinebench R20 ones. That is absolutely impressive. To go over to the conclusion, would I tell you all that you should now change your custom water cooling loop to attach it to your tap water? I don't think so, simply because I cannot see how far or how big the impact on the environment would be if everybody just starts hooking up their PCs to the tap water because it would definitely increase the water consumption or water usage therefore not so sure about this topic but looking at it from like an overclocking perspective for example sometimes if you're like an extreme overclocker and you're pre-testing your hardware a lot of people are doing that with chillers and they're only doing that like I don't know 10 days per year and then your chiller costs maybe 500 to 2000 euro which is definitely a lot and then you're only using it for so much and then they also have a high power consumption in that regard it might be more intelligent to just hook your system up to the tap water and then cool it and see what happens. Obviously the tap water also has chalk inside, it's not distilled water, therefore you might have some residues in your cooling block after a while, but then, I mean, 
you can just get a new cooling block for 80 euro instead of buying a chiller for 2000 euro. That might be for just testing a few days per year might be a more intelligent approach and depending on where you're from your tap water might be even colder than what I had. Maybe you can even get 10 degrees tap water. Therefore definitely interesting also with the aspect that you don't have any noise, you don't have fans, you don't have any pump in there and you're also completely getting rid of the heat your system is dissipating to your room temperature otherwise. At least here in summer, like my room temperature is so hot every single day and then I'm using like those very inefficient mobile ACs and I'm also using the mobile AC basically to also dissipate the heat from my PC, which is definitely not efficient. And in that regard, it might be more intelligent to just dissipate your heat over the tap water instead of also using an AC which has additional power consumption. Therefore, Definitely an interesting approach, I think. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed any aspect about this or if this is just a completely stupid idea. I'm very open to your opinions. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.